What's going down? This is Demoney Harris, and right now you're watching me on Pop Killer TV. Make sure you stay tuned. Damani Harris, it's, it's so dope to meet you here in Warsaw, uh, straight after a concert that you did uh, supporting Jid on his tour. How are you feeling? Wonderful, man. It's my first time out here. I mean, a lot of dope people, a lot of new people, a lot of new fans, gaining new fans. It's always dope, yeah. And uh, for all the people that are not familiar with your music yet, how would you introduce yourself and say what are the values that you stand for? I just try to be as honest as possible. I mean, I feel like it's a story. Like you can feel, you can see the growth in my music. Uh, I just try to just be organic and authentic. Uh, I try not to force a lot of things. You can just tell I'm human, uh, and I'm trying to figure this thing out called life. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, at the beginning of your career, because this is like your fourth project, the one that you put out this far. Uh, but uh, for now, a lot of people that uh, describe you, of course, mention that you are the son of legendary T.I. But do you feel any pressure coming from it, comparisons, or, or is it more of a motivational push to kind of pave your own way and uh, show everybody, you know, that, that you are your own man and, and that you came here to, you know, to, uh, to prove something and to show that you're also an artist? It's everything. It's a blessing because it, it, it allowed me to... Uh challenge it was a challenge uh it was a challenge with me and myself and me and the world you know but yeah it's gonna be whatever you want it to be it could be negative or it can be positive that's what anything you know i chose i choose to turn everything into a positive look at it from a positive perspective and try to make the try to make the best out of it mm -hmm. And as you're making uh, kind of the first steps in the industry, um, does having your dad as a mentor also will help you navigate through all the intricacies of the music industry? Yeah, I mean, before anything, he's a parent. So, uh, of course, he, he wants to lead me in the right direction and make sure I know everything before I go out into the world. That's what any parent. But yeah, he, he definitely... He, he tells me everything he think I should know, you know, right when he think I should know it. And yeah, it's, it's dope to have that kind of that kind of teacher on your side. And even with uh, all my family around me, my mom, you know, my sisters, er learn something from everybody. Mm -hmm. They all want to see me do good, so they want to make sure I know everything they know. And growing up, were you um, around a lot of like uh, music instruments in the studio or around some video shoots later on? Or did you kind of get in the music and, and get that initial spark uh, from your peers at school? How did it start? Uh, how did it start? Um, yeah, I was definitely around a lot of music uh, because my family just did music. My dad, my sisters. Uh, my stepmom, my cousins, you know, it was just all around me. So I was about like nine or ten years old, and I just walked in the studio. I said I wanted to try something, and it went out. It went from trying something to actually it being my way to express myself. So that's what it is right now. So, but yeah, I was, I was, I was consumed in it. I was already in it. I just took it and and, and told my story with it. So yeah. And uh, not long ago, you had a chance to tour the States with Big Crit, which is like my top five ever, you know, one of my favorites. Uh, what are some of your favorite memories from the tour and maybe some moments or some conversations that you had with Big Crit? Man, it's just the people, the people in the crowds, just getting, like I said, getting to travel. That was in the U.S., so getting to travel and, and meet fans that's been uh, telling me to come out to their city. Uh, I, I feel like that was just dope because uh, they've been following me for a long time. I feel like they felt good seeing, you know, the artists that they always said would blow up come to their city and you know really show out. So it was just it was just that and going out into the crowd, hearing people's stories, you know, how my music affected them and where they want to go in life, just things like that, man. It's just all inspirational. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel like this year has been kind of groundbreaking for you in many ways, musically, uh, because you released the project uh, Time Will Tell, which uh, gained a lot of attention and kind of got more people talking about you as well. Uh, and it's a very mature, soulful project. Uh, when I was first listening to it, I was very surprised with the intro, which kind of has spoken word and some violence. It yeah. doesn't really sound like a classical hip hop album intro. Where did the idea come from uh, to, to start it like that? Hmm. I. That's a good question. Where did the idea? Because it, I think it came kind of last minute. Um, I knew I wanted. I knew I wanted to to uh, open up the project something very subtle soothing you know something calm and i just wanted to have the second song just kind of burst open the door a little bit more that's what i knew for a fact i wanted and i just wrote a poem for real that was pretty much like my first poem i wrote and i felt like that was a good intro so i put it there Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it definitely like makes it stand out even yeah. among uh, albums from your peers and among all the hip hop releases basically that, that came out this year. You know? Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and also like one of the things that, that were very interesting to me when I listened to the album, uh, like lyrically, was that you rap about some things um, like investing in, in stocks, investing in yourself instead of like blowing money on material things yeah. uh, it reminded me of the interview i saw with uh, young nipsey yeah. when he was talking about inv investing in assets yeah. instead of like spending your money on, on liabilities and stuff what did you say you want to do i said invest in some assets as opposed to trick off my money on some liabilities like diamonds you know what i'm saying cars that lose value so you drive them off the lot so where did that mind state come from uh, in your case uh just being around business man uh, being around people who had money and knew that, you know, all this jewelry, all these, this extra, just material things, you know, just wouldn't, it wouldn't fill you and it wasn't worth it. And investing was the way to go because you, uh, you got to think about your family, your kids, your kids, kids, you know, your mom, your grandma, you know, you buying a, a Rolls Royce, you know, who's that really going to, it's not really gonna support anybody. It just mm -hmm. makes you look good, I guess. Makes you look like you have money. But yeah, investing is always good. You got something, it's something other than a bank. You know, a bank, you put your money in a bank and they spend your money and invest themselves with your money. So you might as well invest and, and do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel like that's always a good way to go. Yeah, I agree. And not long ago, you got a surprise call from J. Cole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who co-signed your a new album. Yeah. Uh, how did it feel to receive that call, you know? And do you feel like it kind of gave you an even, even bigger push and motivation to, to kind of like, you know, kick through the door and... <laughs> um, yeah, of course. That was, that was the day my project dropped. So the day I dropped it, uh, I had called him that night it had dropped. He didn't answer. I didn't expect him to answer. I just was excited. I was like, let me call this man. Let me, I was calling a bunch of people. But yeah, I didn't expect him to answer and he didn't. I didn't think nothing about it. But then he called me later that day and he told me he listened to it and how much he liked it. I was like, wow, yeah, that was dope. And especially, it especially meant something because it was the first day that my project came out. You know, I, I didn't really know how it would, how it would do, you know, how it would uh, resonate with people. And he was the first one that gave me the thumbs up, pretty much. Like the outside world, mm -hmm. he was the first one that gave me the thumbs up. So I felt like I was heading in the right direction. It definitely gave me a little bit more confidence. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people compare your style and your sound to, to Cole. There are a lot of comparisons online. Like if you go for the comments, um, some people say that like time will tell. It's also, it reminds them of 2014 Forest Hill Drive. Uh, so was Cole an important figure for you in your development as an artist and your growth as lyricist? Yeah, Cole, Andre, Kendrick, Biggie, Pop, uh, UGK, Dungeon Family, all of these, all of these legends. You know, I, I really studied a lot of legends. I feel like, I feel like if, um, I feel like if your music is gonna last forever, you know, why would I not study you? This is this is this is music that I feel like is timeless. So I study from the greats and 
you know, I do my best to, to still uh, speak my mind and tell my story. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. yeah. And one of my favorite tracks uh, on the album is Darkness. Yeah. Uh, was that song special to you as well? Uh, where, where did the inspiration for that one come from? Hmm. Darkness. That was actually the last song I think I recorded. I was like last minute turning my project in. That was the last song I recorded. I had the lady playing the violin late and stuff. Yeah, but but darkness. I was pretty much saying, you know, you go through tough times, and I, I feel like that those tests that life give you, that's when you learn more about yourself. That's when you can see uh, the most. You can see clearer. That's why I say you see, I see better in the darkness, mm -hmm. you know, because you got to go through, uh, you got to go through hell to get to heaven, you know, and it allows you to see who's really with you, see uh, what kind of person you are, see what kind of people around you. You just get to see a lot when you go through things. That's what I meant by that. Mm -hmm. uh, and also in, in the same song, you say, uh, I found happiness in pain, in feeling pain. I found happiness in embracing my mistakes. Yeah. Uh, could you explain that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, I also said, also said something like that in uh, real life. I said, uh, yeah, I said, actually, pain makes me feel alive. It makes you feel like, uh, makes you feel human. And I get to use that pain and turn it into something positive and put it in my music. So I really feel like, I feel like I got such a great gift, you know, I really can't lose in life, you know. Anything I, that's thrown my way, I can take it and, you know, always turn into a positive, you know, put it out to the world and turn it into art that'll that'll live on forever. So yeah, that's what I I never ran from uh fear. I do fear, but I, I never allowed that to uh box me in and keep me from doing things. Mm -hmm. I like to tackle things I fear head on. I feel like that's what uh makes you learn the most about yourself and you get to grow the most. So yeah. And uh, you also say, we're all kids with dreams. So what is your number one dream and where do you see yourself in five years from now? Just living on forever, you know. Uh, when my physical is done, you know, just my stories, my art, the people, I, the people I've affected, um, I just want that to live, live on forever. Inspiration, just my mark on the world, I want it to live on forever. I want you know, the next generation to know I was here, and the next generation to know I was here. I just want it all to be positive. Yeah. Okay, dope. So do you have any last words for the fans in Poland and fans worldwide uh, that are watching this right now? Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, it's my first time in you guys' city. It's very dope. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, time will tell out on all platforms. Check out my music video. Check out my Instagram, Damani, D-O-M-A-N-I. Just keep following. Right, thanks a lot, man. Much appreciated. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. <laughs>